Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today, we're going to be changing out the rear brakes on our 2008 Yamaha Raider. It's really not that tough to do. We just need to take off the caliper, push that piston back in. We're going to take a look at the brake disc to make sure it's okay, and then we're going to get everything reinstalled. And at the very end, it's a good idea to go ahead and bleed the brakes to make sure we've got fresh fluid down inside that caliper. So if you're ready, we'll dive into this. All right, guys, before we get started, when should you need to do this? Well, <laughs> when they look really thin. The Yamaha manual states the wear limit is all the way down to 0.8 millimeters. That is just not much material left at all. I mean, I'm going to show you what 0.8 looks like. That's how thick they say the pad can get down to. I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> and plus, it makes it extremely difficult to measure that small of a distance. What I would recommend is measuring from the back side of the pad. When you get down to about 5.5, that's when I would replace it. And that gives you about 1.5 millimeters left, which is not a lot, but I think it's enough. Would I run it down to 0.8? No. <laughs> I would replace them long before that. Reason being, when you've got that little material left on there, it heats up the entire pad very quickly and wears even faster, and you run the risk of it you know, potentially failing. So I'm going to disagree with Yamaha on this one. The real trick is here, there's no way for you to really tell what's going on, especially if you're looking from this side. So I'd say just to get a ballpark, go around to the other side. That way you can actually see at least the inside pad. And if it's anywhere close to looking like the thickness of a credit card, you better do something about it and do something quick. All right, so let's go ahead and pull our caliper mounting bolts and get it dropped down. And that's just a 12 millimeter. These have been replaced, obviously. EBC. And if you look at the EBC brakes, I mean, these are fairly new. They usually want you to replace them by the time they get down past that, that channel. And that's probably two and a half millimeters right at it before it gets to the plate itself. See, EBC even agrees with me. Wearing them that far in, is Yamaha suggesting? Nah, I, I just can't get behind that. All right, guys, I'm not wild about all the grooves in the disc, but the wear limit, according to Yamaha, is 4.5. I can go ahead and tell you we're not even close to that. 5.8. So we're good to go with this same disc. Let's go ahead and get the piston pushed back into the caliper. My preferred way is just using a clamp and draw it back in. That's it. Now we just need to pop our brake pads in. There, one. And two. There we go. Okay, so let's get our caliper back up into place. And before we put our pins back in, make sure they still have a little coating of grease on them, and that would be caliper grease. And no, you do not need to put much of this stuff on there. Just a light coat. Okay. There's one. There's two. Now we're going to torque these to 13 foot pounds. All right, guys, we're not quite done yet. We need to go ahead and pop the seat so we can get to the reservoir, and make sure it's full. Then we'll go ahead and bleed the brakes. Plenty of fluid in there. If anything, it's overfilled. I think someone may have filled it up when the brake pads were probably worn down. Now that I've compressed the 
the piston back all the way into the caliper has forced the fluid up, but I think we're fine. Go ahead and get our eight millimeter wrench on the bleed screw. Then we can attach our catch can. All right, that should give me enough movement. All right, so push, release, close. Keep an eye on your reservoir. Make sure it doesn't go dry. Run it down to the bottom or close to it and then fill it back up. All right, we'll call that good. Yeah, the goal of this is just to get fresh fluid down into the caliper itself because that's where all the heat is and that's where the, the fluid is gonna break down. Now with that done, we're gonna to top off our reservoir with some DOT4 fluid. Now on the back side of it, you can see where the, the fill line is, right there. So we don't wanna go past that. Now, we can put our cover back in place. Well, all right, guys, there you go. Nothing to it. Well, listen, if you need these parts or any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.